Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to read to you from the Sun's Eye New Edition. I would have selected one of my favorite Caribbean short stories called Charlotte's Strange Bargain. It was written by Ralph Prince. I know some of you don't have his text, so I would have uploaded a PDF version into our Google Classrooms. As I read along, you can follow along as well. Remember, if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. Okay? Shallow Strange Bargain, written by Ralph Prince. In Glentis Village, when people notice that you love your belly, they often say, your belly going to bring you the same thing like Shallow. And then they would tell you the story of Shallow and his strange bargain. It's an old, old story, and they say it's true. This is how it goes. There once lived a man in Glentis Village named Shallow. Some called him Long Belly Shallow because he loved food too much. Others called him Shallow the Fifer because he was the best fife player in the village. The fife was made from bamboo in Shallow's own secret way, and it was the sweetest fife the villagers had ever heard. They believed that the music he played on it was the sweetest music in all the world. One afternoon, Shallow was returning home from working in his lands in the mountain. He was on the lower slopes, but still a long way from home, when a heavy shower of rain began to fall. He sheltered under a tree, but he got slightly wet all the time. The rain poured in torrents all afternoon and all evening, enveloping the mountain in a thick white sheet. When darkness gathered, Shallow felt cold and miserable. So he took out his fife and played it. He played all the songs he could remember. Songs of the old folk when they lived in the mountain. Songs of the fishermen in Glentis village. Sad songs and merry songs. All these and more he played and played. Sweeter than he had ever played before. Then suddenly, he stopped playing. Right before him appeared a tall red man. Charlotte was astonished for he had not seen where the man had come from. Go ahead playing, said the man. You played so sweet that I came up from yonder to hear you. Charlotte asked him who he was, and the man said that everybody knew him. Charlotte then looked at him closely to see if he really knew him. The man seemed neither young nor old, but ageless. His skin was red and looked like the shell of a boiled lobster. His hair was white and flowing. His eyes were red and glowed as if fires burned within them. Never see you before, said Shallow, after looking at him searchingly and long. You will soon remember who I am declared the man, and you will get to know me more, Shallow. How you know me name? asked Shallow in surprise. Aha! <laughs> laughed the man. I know everybody, Shallow. Everybody in this world. Meanwhile, Shallow was still getting wet, so he edged closer up to the trunk of the tree. But the rain fell off the man's body like water sliding off a duck's back. Would you like to come down to my place for shelter? Asked the man. Shallow wondered where that place was. But he was wet and above all, hungry. So he agreed to go, hoping to get some food there. The man led the way and Shallow followed. As fast as the man walked, a hole opened in the mountain before him, going downwards all the time. At last, he stopped. Shallow found himself in a large oven-like room with fires burning along the walls. It was so hot, his clothes soon became dry and he had to take off his shirt but the man was not even sweating. 
he offered Shallow a chair before a table and then sat facing Shallow. The man said nothing, but watched him intently. Shallow yawned several times, expecting the man to offer him something to eat. But the man just watched him intently and said nothing. At last, Shallow could bear it no more. You got any food? He asked. Plenty, the man replied. I was waiting for you to ask for some. He then put a large calabash on the table before Shallow. What would you like to eat? Asked the man, smiling. Anything, answered Shallow. Just say what you want, the man explained. And this magic calabash will give it to you. But you must say it in a rhyme like this. Calabash, calabash, food time come. Bring, bring pepper pot and give me some. And so Shallow did as the man said and repeated the rhyme. Calabash, calabash, food time come. Bring, bring pepper pot and give me some. And then like magic, hot pepper pot instantly sprang up in the calabash, filling it to the brim. Shallow was amazed. His eyes bulged, but his mouth was watering. Have a belly full, said the man. Eat your pepper pot. It's yours. All yours. So Shallow ate and ate on it till his stomach was full and the calabash was empty. Mm. And then he licked his fingers. Mm. The man then asked Shallow to play the fight for him. As his stomach was full, Shallow played even sweeter than before. You play wonderfully, said the man smiling. I, I wish I could play as sweet as you. And he borrowed the fife and played a tune. To Charlotte's surprise, the man played beautifully, though not half as sweet as he. A wonderful fife you have here, said the man, rubbing his hands over the keys. Mm -hmm. A wonderful fife. But Charlotte was hardly listening. He was gazing at the calabash and imagining what it would be like to have one like it, to give him all the food he wanted. You seem to like the calabash, Charlotte, the man remarked. Charlotte smiled. Would you like to have it? asked the man. Shallow smiled again. Very well. Then we can make a bargain. A bargain? asked Shallow in surprise. Yes, replied the man, rubbing his hands over the keys of the fife. A bargain, but you must keep it a secret. Was the bargain? Asked Shallow. You take my calabash and I take your fife. Shallow considered the matter for a while. He wanted the calabash, but he didn't want to part with his fife. He had had it since he was young. It was the best fife in the village, and playing it was his greatest joy. Next to eating, 
He hesitated, unable to make up his mind. Come, Shallow, said the man. Be sensible. You can always get another fight, but you can never get another calabash like this again. Even in hard times, the man went on. This magic calabash will give you all the food you want. Think of the fungi and salt fish, the dumplings, the pork, the rice, and the meaty pepper pot, and the sauce, the aki. All these and more are yours. All yours, just for the asking and the eating. These were the very dishes Shallow loved the most. And with the calabar so near, the temptation was just too great. All right, he said at last, give me the calabar. Give me, give me the calabar. And take the fight. So as the man gave Shallow the calabash, he kept the fight. He then led Shallow back up the hole. The rain was over. Mind you, Shallow. Mind you, Shallow. Mind you, Shallow! said the man as they shook hands. Keep a bag in a secret. Otherwise, it can be hell with me and you. Shallow promised to keep the bargain a secret and they parted. As he walked home, Shallow wondered who the strange man was. But he soon dropped the matter from his mind as he thought of the magic calabash. He got all for himself. And to test it again, he said, Calabash, calabash, food time come. Bring, bring Aki and give me some. And he ate Aki all the way home. From then onwards, the calabash provided Charlotte with all the food he fancied. But from then, that same time, he stopped cultivating his mountain lands or doing any other work. He did not get another fight, for he did not love music anymore. All he now lived for was to eat. So as the weeks passed, he waxed fatter and fatter, and he became bigger than anyone else in Glentis village. His face was round like the dumplings he ate every day. And he became so fat that he could barely open his eyes. His body took on a barrel-like bulge. And his belly sagged over his belt like that of a pig hanging down. Six months went by and life for Charlotte went on like this. No work, no music, and food in abundance whenever he wanted. Then hard times struck the island. There came a long drought and life became hard for the people in Glentis village. Many of them starved and sometimes their only food was sugarcane. But Charlotte's magic calabash continued to give him food. All the food he wanted, he ate more than ever, sometimes feasting like king. Then suddenly his dream of endless feasting ended. It happened this way. The draw had been on for three months and the villagers began to wonder where Charlo was getting his food from. For he did not go to the shops to buy anything and his neighbors did not see him cook anything. So he, when he walked down the road, people sometimes asked, but Shallow, how you getting on so well and we catching so much hell? This always made him laugh. And as he laughed, his eyes would close and his many chins would tremble and his belly would shake like that of a pig when it runs. But all he would say was, <laughs> Shut mouth, catch na fly. Shut mouth, not catch fly. 
so the source of his food supply remained a mystery. Even to his best friends, an old friend of his named Zaki was constantly trying to find out, but Shalo would not tell. All he would say was, shut mouth, not catch fly. But as the drought wore on, Zaki became desperate, for he had a wife and ten children to feed. One evening, he went to see Shalo. Shalo was finishing a calabash of palaloo. He swallowed the last mouthful and rumbled a belch, licked his fingers, stretched his legs across the floor, and peered out of his fat, fleshy eyes at Zaki. Hey, Shalo! Zaki called out. Awadu. Ah, boy, Shalo replied. Mide, just a make out. Man, you na make out? You na making out, Zaki replied. You're fat like mud. Shalo rumbled another belch and laughed as he clasped his fat hands across his barrel of a stomach. Zaki gazed hard at the calabash for a while. And then said, But Shalo, you're worthless. Uh, uh, what me do? asked Shalo. Man, you're worthless. Zaki replied, You know me and me wife and take pygmy. And them are dead or hungry. And you never a one time say, Hey, Zaki, take this food, all your yam. Me food to pour for you, said Shalo. To pour? cried Zaki. And the kala you, you just yam as smell so nice. Me cut yam, the calabash of kala just clean right now. Shallow gazed at Zaki. Thin body, bony face, and hollow eyes. And he felt sorry for him. All right, Zaki, he said. I'll give you all some food. But you mustn't tell nobody about it, huh? He then recited the magic rhyme. Calabash, calabash, food time come. Bring, bring, calaloo, and give me some. Immediately, the calabash became filled to the brim with hot calaloo. Zaki was amazed. He stared at the calabash with bulging eyes, and at last he said, well, 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 so this is how you're getting food by Obia? It's not Obia, replied Shadow. It's by Obia, Zaki repeated. So you're a big Obia man, Shadow. You're a big Obia man. You're getting all this food by Obia. Hey. It's not Obia, Shadow repeated. Pitted in defense. Zaki, I tell ya, it's not Obia. Shalo was afraid that Zaki would spread the word around because it was an awful thing in Glenty's village to be called an Obia man. Well, if it's not by Obia, said Zaki, what is it? Tell me, Shalo, how else you get in this calabash full of calaloo if it's not by Obia? Shallow. Uh, I will tell you, but we must keep it a secret. Go ahead and eat the callaloo. It's a good food. Eh? Eat the callaloo. I'm going to tell you the story. Zaki began to eat the callaloo. And as he ate, Shallow told him the whole story. When he mentioned the tall red man, Zaki laughed. <laughs> After a while, he laughed so much that he had to stop eating. By the time Shallow finished his story, Zaki was rocking uncontrollably, laughing with uncontrollable laughter, holding his sides as if they were bursting. What make you laugh so? asked Shallow. It's the bargain you make with the devil. Zaki replied, The devil? cried Shallow in surprise. 
Zaki then explained that the tall red man who appeared suddenly as from nowhere, who lived in that hot place down below, and who had provided such a magic calabash, could have been no one else but the devil. It was then that it slowly dawned on Shallow that the man he made the bargain with was indeed the devil. Shallow had always heard that it was not wise to deal with the devil. And when he began to imagine what the devil said and what the devil meant when he said it would be hell if the bargain was not kept a secret, he became fearful and he shuddered. He begged Zaki again and again not to tell anyone about the bargain. Zaki promised to keep the secret. And to encourage him, Shala repeated the magic rhyme several times and filled a bucket of food for him to take home and told him to turn, return any time for more. The next morning, Zaki and his wife and their 10 children went to Shala's home with the empty bucket for more food. They met the house open with the front door broken off. Shalom! Zaki called. No answer came. Zaki and his wife and their 10 children went inside. Shalom! Zaki called again. Away you! Away the calabash! No answer came. Shalom! Shallow away you are with the calabash. No answer came. They searched all over the house and outside in the yard and everywhere in Glentis village. But neither Shallow nor the calabash was anywhere to be seen. The villagers searched for him for a long time even in his mountain lands. But Charlo was never seen again. That's the end of the story. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Until next time, have a good afternoon. <laughs>